the lobsters of the English Civil War. When we think of the cavalry from the English Civil War, we perhaps think of dashing long-haired cavaliers with their flashing blades, or maybe the dour tri-bar helmeted buff-coat-wearing harquebusiers of Parliament. We do not instantly think of men dressed like knights of the Middle Ages, fully encased in heavy armour, but a regiment of these armoured men was formed by the politician and later cavalry officer Sir Arthur Hasselrig. Hasselrig, whose name was spelled a variety of ways, was a parliamentarian from well before the English Civil War. In the 1630s and early 40s, he held radical views and was an outspoken opponent to the king. So much so that he refused to pay a list of taxes and fines and was finally lodged temporarily in the Tower of London. As well as being a member of Parliament and being a close ally to John Pym, he was given the title of Knight of the Shire of Leicestershire in both the short and long parliaments. His final act of defiance before the outbreak of hostilities was his involvement in the Militia Bill, a piece of legislation designed to remove the King's control over the trained bands and the army. At the outbreak of the war in 1642, Hasserig himself was at the first pitched battle of Edge Hill. Later in the year, he found himself under the command of Sir William Waller. His time under Waller found Hasselrig mired in controversy, as he was present at the desecration of Winchester and Chichester cathedrals. In the new year, Hasselrig was in London, where he began forming a new regiment of horse. This unit would not be like anything the Royalist armies had. The men would be protected in full plate armour from head to knee. These heavy cavalry, or cuirassiers, would become known as Hasselrig's Lobsters. A parliamentary source reported that Sir William Waller, having received from London in June 1643, a fresh regiment of 500 horse under the command of Sir Arthur Hasselrig, which was so prodigiously armed that they were called by the other side the Regiment of Lobsters, because of their bright iron shells with which they were covered being perfect cuirassiers. The unit would have been incredibly expensive to equip and maintain, and it would be sensible to assume that the regiment was made up of men of a certain rank and wealth who could afford not only the armour, but also a horse strong enough to carry such a cavalryman. In 1629, it has been said that it cost one pound and sixpence to equip a standard harquebusier, and next to that, it would cost four pounds and ten shillings to equip a cuirassier. This may not seem a lot today, but in the middle of the 17th century it was equivalent to £600. Despite the lobsters being so well protected, they were far from being unbeatable on the field of battle. In fact, at the Battle of Ripple Field in April 1643, whilst covering the retreating parliamentary forces, they suffered 70% casualties. Their success rate, however, did fluctuate throughout the war. A royalist observer wrote that the lobsters were the first that made any impression upon the king's horse, who, being unarmed, were not able to bear the shock with them. Besides, they were secure from hurts of the sword. In 1643, Hasselrig's cavalry did become unstuck, however. At Lansdowne and Roundway Down, they suffered defeat. At Roundway Down, the lobsters, following Dutch tactics, received the royalist charge while stationary and firing their pistols. The battle saw Hasselrig's horse being forced to flee over a sheer drop. Many men and horses died on the descent, but many survived due to their armour. Hasselrig himself was injured and nearly died from his wounds. It is reported that he was shot three times, but every shot bounced off his stout armour. Richard Atkins reported putting a pistol to Hasselrig's head, fired and yet saw no effect. He tried hacking at his opponent and again could make no headway. It was only after Atkins began attacking Hasselrig's horse that he managed to unseat him. Having fallen off his horse and clumsily trying to regrip his sword, he attempted to surrender. It was here that he was rescued by a party of his own men. After the battle, in a rare moment of jollity, the king said, if Hasselrig had been as well supplied as he was fortified, he could have withstood a siege. 
Despite the defeats and setbacks the lobsters had endured during the war, they did also achieve some notable successes. At the Battle of Cheriton in 1644, the lobsters attacked a royalist regiment of horse, with Sir Arthur Hasselrig in the lead. His 300 heavy cavalry apparently slaughtered them all. As with all other units in the English Civil War, be they infantry or cavalry, Hasselrig's cuirassiers had their own colour. A cavalry colour, standard or flag, was carried by a cornet. The cornet was the most junior cavalry officer and corresponded to the ensign in foot regiments. Today, an ensign would equate to a second lieutenant. Hasselrig's colour was a green background with an arch of clouds covering an anchor. This strange design was accompanied by the motto, Only in Heaven. The English Civil War saw the final death of the fully armoured cavalrymen. Armour was proving too expensive. The units were less mobile than less armoured units, and the armour would prove ineffective against musket fire. Sir Arthur Hasselrig's lobsters have however given us a lasting legacy to the armed forces of this country. The lobsters are the predecessor of the Royal Horse Guards, one of the British monarchy's household regiments. <laughs>